if Jesus traveled to India. Somebody brought this up. I didn't realize they meant post resurrection or at like the Ahmed Didat um Zachar Nike view that he was massaged in the tomb, you know, that basically acted as an apartment for him and then he went off to India and died in India. The <coughs> the Ahmadiyya view, the uh, Amadi view, the Ahmadiyya Muslim view, um, which is again a little over a hundred years old. The, the the Jesus died in Kashmir thing. Um, what happened from the time he was born until his ministry began? Probably a working man. Well, he definitely was working man. A tecton. Tecton doesn't translate as carpenter. It's more construction worker. He probably worked with stone. He's a stone mason, not a Freemason. Somebody who chisels away stone. Um, probably did the craft that his father did. Uh, the baptism of John's baptism is where it starts. Where it kicks off. His, what people call his mission. Something happened where he thought he went out. Again, I'm approaching it with critical scholarship, critical historical scholarship, um, trying to steer away from the devotional aspects of it. That's why I'm not bringing up any of the birth narratives or anything like that. Um, so he started out, um, he gained a following, uh, pretty unanimous that it was 12, some of the 12, we have different names for, or get diff named differently, but definitely he had, uh, his main guy, uh, Shimon, uh, Simon Bar Jonah, or Shimon Bar jo Jonah, or Simeon Bar Jonah, um, and then there was, uh, there was another guy named John, who's apparently a young guy, um, and, uh, Philip, Andrew, um, there were a couple zealots amongst his followers, and I want to say there was a James in there, and remember James is Jacob, um, but this is not the brother of Jesus Nazareth, or Jesus of the Galilee, I should say, Jesus, the son of Joseph and Mary, um, crucified under Pontius Pilate, died, what happened to the body, that goes into the devotion area, but did he get any of his ideas from India? Did he travel a lot? Well, he traveled around Syria, Palestine. Um, is there a single thing that he said that um, does not reflect the rabbinical and Sadducaic discussion going on at the time? or the ideas and discussions in the Bible at the time, the, the scriptures at the time. I don't want to say Bible because there was no canon yet. 
maybe the first canon, which you could say would be the, the Torah, but in the writings, the prophets, and the writings that would be in the Septuagint, but not in the modern Western Bible. No, he doesn't. He doesn't touch on anything other than that. That seems to be all of his literary input. He comments on it, and sometimes he overrules it, but he never brings in anything else. He's never, he's not, uh... I mean, this is why you have people like Manny coming around, you know, about 200 years later trying to blend, you know, trying to say, well, Christianity needs a bit of Buddhism and Zoroastrianism. You know, and that Manny was the paraclete. Um, this is why the Gnostics said, uh, "No, we need. He needs the, the the wisdom and the Greek thought of, of Plato and Pythagoras, and uh, you know the Aeons and the Archons, and this is needed." The problem is, he's very typical, but his commentary, which is his wisdom upon uh, what we would call the Old Testament, and um, the, Sad the Sadducee and the Pharisaic view of the time, was profound and great and wise. And he stumps them at every turn. And they even were in awe of him. You know, how, um, how can a man not yet 50 be this wise, you know? I mean, even when they, they dragged the woman, uh, I mean, in many accounts, I mean, many passages. But is there anything, I mean... There's no signs in any of his sayings that he read anything that was Buddhist or Hindu. Um, heck, the Bhagavad Gita wasn't even written yet. And um, nothing of Buddhism was written down until between the late first century and the mid-fourth century, so wouldn't have been accessible.